Hello everyone, this is Mr. Myring, and I will be bringing you another calculus video. Hello, about uh, inverse trigonometric derivatives. Today you can see uh, that's what we're going to focus on, and we're only going to focus on two of them. Uh, the two that we're going to focus on are the inverse sine and the inverse tangent. Uh, but this video is just going to be the inverse sine. So we'll uh, hammer through that real quickly. Um, you know, so this is your derivative, and we're going to look at the uh, proof of that using implicit differentiation. So using that, uh, we're going to start by trying to write our equation as y equals uh, the inverse sine of x. Right? That's where we're going to start and try to prove the derivative of that. Um, to do that, we don't really know much about inverse sine, but we do know a little bit about regular sine. So uh, we're going to do the sine of both sides, so we have the sine of y equals x. That's something we can handle with implicit differentiation because now, as you look at this, you see, well, I can do the derivative of that inside part, and I get dy dx is the derivative of that, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine of that y, equals the derivative of x, which is 1. So that's where we start, and we can solve for dy dx pretty nicely, where you get uh, 1 over cosine of y. And that's pretty nice. You've got uh, dy dx solved for, but we want to do a little bit better. We want to actually get it to look like how we started it with the uh, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So to do that, we need to use a little bit of our trigonometric identities. Um, those you should be pretty familiar with. That's going to be um, sine squared of y in this case plus cosine squared of y, and that will equal 1. Right, that's something that you've dealt with before, but um, we just put a y in instead of x. It doesn't really matter what's the inside. It could be theta, y, x, anything. And uh, we want to be working with cosine of y, so in order to do that, we're going to subtract. So you have cosine of y, or sorry, cosine squared of y equals 1 minus sine squared of y. And uh, I don't want to have cosine squared, as you see in the bottom of our original dy dx fraction. And so um, I can do the square root of both sides. So I have cosine of y equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared of y. That's a lot nicer, um, because now I have cosine of y. I could plug that in there. But I'm going to do one more step, because you know I started this thing in terms of x, and I want to finish it in terms of x as well. So I don't want to have a y in that square root. So in order to do that, I'm going to take a look at this thing here that has the y in it. That's that sine squared of y. I don't like that, but I do know something about how y and x relate to each other. So if I take that and say, all right, well, I know sine of y equals x. That probably means, and it does, that sine squared of y equals x squared. And that's this part right here, sine squared of y. So you can take this cosine of y, which is what we have down here, and once we rewrite it as the square root of 1 minus x squared, now you can take that and plug it in, and you get dy dx equals 1 over that cosine of y, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared. And you've finished to find the derivative of your inverse sine, which is also sometimes called uh, the arc sine of x as well. So that's your uh, proof of the inverse trigonometric trigonometric derivative of your inverse of sine. Uh, there's also one to look at with the inverse of tangent of x. So thank you very much.